Hello. Thank you to be there. So I'm Clément Calins from C Team. I'm in charge of uh, the polymers and composite department. And good morning, Jeremy Vial, responsible for the partnership for hydrogen at C Team. So we are here to talk about the challenges on materials uh, for hydrogen in land mobility. Um, just a few words on C Team, maybe just very quickly to give you the profile of the company. Uh, CETIM, we are a technical center in France, uh, but also in, in Morocco, Singapore, but mainly in France with uh, 20 main locations, 1,300 people now. Um, but in details, um, we, are, uh, we have different expertises uh, to uh, make, to, 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 to give some services to industry, to mechanical industry in general. Uh, you, you have different kind of um, yeah, skills we have uh, between materials, product, process, and so on. But we will focus specifically today on polymers and composite engineering and, uh, and details after on the hydrogen activities and all the skills and expertise we have since many years now uh, to, to, to put this expertise on, on the, the hydrogen activities. If we look at the polymers and composite department, uh, so we have 130 people in the, in the department um, working on polymers and composites with uh, different scientific and industrial partnerships. So I will not go into details today on that, but don't hesitate to come to see us uh, to, for more details. Uh, what we can offer in terms of polymers and composite activities, uh, Innovation, of course, we can bring, uh, help you to, have, uh, to, to, to put some innovation in your products, in your process, uh, in your materials in general, um, including the design, the testing, uh, the manufacturing of, also, because we are also uh, developing processes to improve the maturity of these processes and to, uh, to, to, make, uh, to make it possible in the future and to make some te technological transfer uh, in the future in, in, in your companies. Uh, and all the expertise we have uh, also, including the training, of course, um, catalogs or specific trainings, and, uh, and, and um, uh, a big activity also at the, on the end of lives, um, including recycling and, and all the topics we can have uh, today on this, uh, on this. I give you the next slide. Thank you, Clément. So and now concerning the stakes and challenges for hydrogen industry. So first, I would like to set the, the idea for land mobility. There is some specific challenges on this field that are the safety. First point, very important, is to have a safety for land mobility because it's directly connected to the people. Then there is lightness, which is a key point for land mobility also because this contributes to decrease the CO2 emission, the autonomy, of course, that are a key point to have a long range and a significant activity for this, uh, for this field. Recycling ability, which is now also a key point because there is a huge volume produced and we have to manage the spare part and the scraps. And finally, the cost. Cost optimized because it's also connected to a very large amount of vehicles mm. to be produced. So this is general stakes connected to land mobility. And now, concerning the hydrogen, there is additional stakes that are directly connected to the value chain of hydrogen industry that is split in production, transmission, distribution, storage, that we can also call logistics and end use. For the production, the key point is to have decarbonized production technology for hydrogen production. For the storage, there is a physical challenge that is directly connected to the very low density of hydrogen. And finally, now for the end use, the target is to use hydrogen and convert the energy stored in hydrogen shape into electricity or mechanical power with an optimized efficiency. The hydrogen also generates some specific uh, 
component behavior to be considered that are the permeation, that is a key point because hydrogen is a very diffusive gas that goes through the material, as you may know. Durability, hydrogen also can contribute to the brittleness of some metallic material, but also uh, participate to the aging of composite material. And the low density, that is a key point for the storage that push you to reach a very high pressure to store a significant quantity of hydrogen in a vehicle. Saying that, one example to see what is the key point to use hydrogen in, to use composite in hydrogen industry, we can take one example about the mechanical behavior. And as we are the technical center for mechanical industry, mechanical behavior is a key point for us. The mechanical behavior of composite versus metallic material. If you consider, I will go a little bit in detail for technical, so please uh, follow me. So if you consider one kilo of steel, one kilo of steel is almost one euro. I make it simple. And now you want to make one rod of one meter length with one kilo of steel. This leads you to a rod with a significant uh, section of 128 millimeters square. This can support about four tons. Then let's go to composite. Composite material for one kilo of carbon composite, you have for the same uh, length of one meter rod, a, a bigger section, of course, because the composite is about 20 times lower in density than, uh, not, not 20 times, uh, about you can say seven times, six times lower in density compared to the steel. And in this case, you have a section of about 670 square millimeters. With such a thickness, you can bear about 67 tons. But now, if you compare the composite to the steel, not on the weight, but on the cost, if you consider one euro of composite material, you have only 50 grams. With 50 grams, the, the same rod of one meter length, is only 33 millimeters square, so very thin rod. And in this case, you can bear, because the carbon fiber is very, uh, with a very high tensile modulus, you can bear up to three tons, very close to the steel. So this is to show you that com comparing the weight, we have a very significant improvement to use composite, but comparing the cost, we have also some an uh, we can say about an equivalence between the composite and the steel. And we can illustrate this on a very simple calculation on a vessel. So as you may know, we use a standard pressure, operating pressure of about 700 bar. 700 bar, according to the safety standard, we have to reach, to reach a burst pressure up to 1,600 bar. And in this case, if you make the tank in steel, you have, as you can see here, a thickness of 46 millimeters compared to the composite with only 14 millimeters. In weight, we have for the steel a tank that will uh, weigh about 200 kilograms. Comparing to the composite for the same performance of one hydrogen kilogram stored is only nine kilo. And finally, for the cost, it's almost the same as you can see because we have uh, a ratio that is uh, similar between the cost and the weight of about 20. And in this case, we have a similar solution. So the composite is an interesting solution for the weight and an equivalent solution, we can say, for the cost. Now, some words about the technical solution that we can uh, bring in the set team. We have started last, in October 2021, a very big project to support the industrial partner and industrial customer in their development toward hydrogen industry. The goal is to adapt our knowledge, our expertise on the mechanical field for hydrogen application. We have set about 25 million euro capex to develop, improve, and adapt our machinery to make testing, to make evaluation in hydrogen environment. To do so, we have dedicated infrastructure, of course, but also some equipment to make material characterization under gas hydrogen, ceiling performance and material and on material and equipment, 
And ceiling performance is a key stake for hydrogen industry, as we understand easily. We, can we have developed also some test bench for aging and fatigue behavior of material and component under hydrogen environment. We developed some advanced manufacturing processes, and we also adapt our knowledge toward the cryogenic, deep cryogenic material behavior. And finally, we will also develop some test loops to evaluate under operating condition some component fluid system for hydrogen. I mean, valve, pump, vessels, piping system, and evaluate their behavior in hydrogen. I mean, their lifetime on one side, but also the failure mode that will appear is on a valve under hydrogen condition for long term. What, we, what will break? Is it the joint? Is it the body of the valve? Is it the bolt? In this case, we can also support the industrial to improve, to increase the lifetime of their component. Here's some illustration, but maybe I will go fast on it. Uh, for, mechanical for mechanical testing, we have developed some specific machinery to adapt our equipment and set some fatigue tests on metallic material and composite material under hydrogen behavior. As you under hydrogen environment. As you can see here, we have a testing machine for fatigue, and we have developed one autoclave uh, that goes around and set the machinery adapted to work under hydrogen gas. We can work at the moment at room temperature 30 bar, and I, I think it's next month, we have one machinery that will come to make 100 80, bar, 80 degrees and 400 bar under hydrogen. We have also some equipment dedicated to sealing performance and diffusion of hydrogen through the material. This is a specific knowledge, a specific expertise that we have in set team for more than 30 years on helium leakage detection. And for about two years, two, three years now, we have adapted this knowledge, this expertise, to make diffusion of hydrogen toward, through the material. We are able to analyze some material, but also some component, such as uh, joint, but also valve or pumps that are exposed to an inner pressure of hydrogen, and we can evaluate the diffusion of hydrogen out of the valve, out of the valve, out of the pump. As I said, we also developing some equipment and acquiring some equipment to test material under deep cryogenic environment. We have here a TMA, that is a machinery that uh, is used to evaluate the thermal expansion of the material. And this machinery can go, can go down to four Kelvin. I mean, four degrees uh, higher than the absolute zero. This type of machinery is a very, very uh, rare, I can say. Uh, there is uh, five machinery like this in the world. And the previous one have been delivered to NASA in USA. So ours arrived in January this year. Yes, Clément, we were, we were also talking, uh, Jeremy was talking about also advanced manufacturing. Um, if we, uh, for, for this example, we have here the, the uh, process we developed in CETIM to make possible uh, to produce uh, hydrogen tanks in thermoplastic composites. So this, this machine is in CETIM since many years now. Uh, it's a laser assisted system for tape winding uh, with tape winding technology. Um, of course, we make different kind of products, but since a few years now, we are working um, hard on developing composite tanks uh, with thermoplastics specifically. Uh, we talk about type 4B. Uh, it means that we will talk in details after, but we, we, as we are talking about thermoplastic composites, the, uh, the idea is to say um, we can weld the liner with the composite, so it's improving the type four, the classic ta type four uh, composite tank. Uh, the aim of this technology is to 
to show that this is possible, this is feasible to um, design, uh, to calculate before, and to make, uh, to manufacture this kind of pressure tanks, uh, high pressure tanks uh, with thermoplastic composites. Uh, we proved it in many projects, also Euro European projects, uh, with, uh, with TOR specifically, uh, showing that we can reach the, the, the pressure, uh, the burst pressure, and so on, we, can, uh, we need to have for these kind of applications. But there is still um, some improvement to do, and that's why we, we are buying a new machine, uh, so it's a quite new uh, information because we will receive these new machines next month in CETIM to improve the capacity and uh, the, the, the speed uh, of production of this kind of tanks. The video you can have here is the, are the first video we, we have for the, 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 the reception of the, the machine. So of course it's uh, with a reduced speed, but the aim is to go very faster specifically in domes, uh, increasing the, the speed and, and going 10 times faster than, than before uh, to be sure that the, 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 the cost of production will not be an issue in the future for this kind of tanks. So this is what we, we, we want to improve, developing uh, advanced manufacturing processes like this one. If we are talking also about, uh, very quickly, about recycling, Topics. Um, if we talk about thermoplastic composites, it's also the good thing to uh, improve the, recycl the recyclability of this kind of tanks. Um, we also develop some processes to, to, uh, to make it possible with thermomechanical process, for example, uh, because it's good to use thermoplastic composites, but if you want to recycle it, you have to, ice, to have solutions, existing solutions. So one of them uh, can be also to recycle it with, thermo with uh, thermomechanical processes. Uh, there is a pilot line also we are developing in CETIM in the east of France, uh, uh, improving and showing the possibilities you can have uh, using this kind of processes to make new panels again with uh, scraps coming from vessels, from tanks, for example, and to make new panels again for new projects in the future with new recycled panels coming from this kind of composites. Use case, maybe it's your, <laughs> your turn, Jeremy. <Johnny. laughs> Thank you, Clément. So yeah, also the goal of this presentation is to share with you some use cases for land mobility in hydrogen industry with material, with composite material. So obviously the first point we think about the high pressure vessel. High pressure vessels are ranked in four types, as you may know. Uh, the first type, type one, is a full metal vessel. In this case, there, of course, there is no composite, but all the other type, we need composite material. From type two to type five, there is composite material with an increasing part of the complete weight of the vessel. And the, you can say the most uh, famous uh, type that you will find here is the type four, type five, maybe. And also, as uh, Clément explained just uh, before, the type four B, that is, like a type four, but with a, um, a similar uh, matrix between the composite shell and the liner. But there is also other application. Some application also of the composite still on the storage is for the cryo storage. In this case, we don't need a liner and we prefer not to have a liner because there is very big difference between thermal expansion between the plastic liner and the composite shell. So in this case, we go to a single layer, a single composite layer, so we talked about type five, and in the case of a cryogenic tank, we need a double-walled uh, tank to improve the thermal insulation. And the background in this field is mainly focused on space industry. But today, there is some big project, as you can see here, for aeronautics to go further on the use of such a vessel for the storage of cryogenic hydrogen. So cryogenic hydrogen huh, is below 20 Kelvin, so higher than 20 Kelvin, so minus 253 degrees. Uh, if you go higher than this temperature, the hydrogen come back to a gas state, 
So if you want to keep hydrogen at a liquid state, you have to be to go lower than minus 253 degrees. But there is also other application that moves out of the storage. That is, for example, the piping system. For the land mobility, we need also piping because there is some refueling station. And in this case, you have to bring the hydrogen on the station. So there is some development today to have high pressure or low pressure piping system dedicated to hydrogen. And in this case also, you will need some composite material. But there is also some other application that you have also maybe yet heard about that are the fuel cell and in particular the bipolar plate. Bipolar plate is a key component for the fuel cell to make the electrode system as you may know. And in this case, there is two types of technology, two major technologies today, some metallic bipolar plate that are very interesting on the mechanical behavior, but that are exposed to corrosion and the composite bipolar plate that are very interesting on the durability due to the corrosion resistance. But there is major challenges in this case that are connected to the brittleness of the composite bipolar plate and also the challenges connected to the molding. There is also another activity that are the end plates because for the fuel cell, as you can see, we have a lot of, of bipolar plates that are in the stacks, but you have to close the stack and this is done by an end plate that could be also made in composite material. So this is some key opportunities, I mean, uh, for the composite material in the hydrogen industry. So if we go to the conclusion. Yes, uh, we can keep it. <laughs> uh, conclusion, yes, because uh, it's time, uh, three minutes left. Um, there are some amazing benefits using composites for the hydrogen industry, of course. Um, uh, resistance to corrosion, you talked about it just before. Lightness and mechanical performances, of course, durability in general. Um, some already challenges uh, because uh, there are still some improvement to do and as a technical centers, uh, we work for that and uh, and we try to, to give you all the, the, the to, to reduce all these challenges. So the challenge of processing and molding uh, uh, this kind of materials for the hydrogen, and uh, how to make it how to to to, to give the, the durability and the performance to, to all these systems. And the last one. And on this point, yeah. we can support you as an industrial partner, industrial customer of the set team we can support you to go on that challenges together based on our unique expertise on mechanical industry and adapted and improved toward hydrogen activities. And also we can build together some partnership to support the hydrogen industry development. So this, is, this was a quick overview uh, of what we can show on, on this, but of course you can see us on our booth, yeah. all six L50. Uh, for more details, or uh, maybe we have one minute left to have uh, questions, yeah. if you want, <laughs> I think. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Yeah.